G'day, I'm Ross. And I'm Carol. We manage and live here at the Chukiella Roadhouse in the Great Victoria Desert, Western Australia. We are really remote. We are the most remote roadhouse in Australia. Australia is a huge country and we are this little pinprick. So if someone was looking at a remote store, that's us. We've been up here 18 months, just over now, and we're in no hurry to leave the place, can tell you that. We love the lifestyle. It's what we call home now. Come on, mate. A lot of people take this road on as a, as a challenge, basically. You say to them, bloody hell, mate, you're going through here, take a bit of care because it's a dangerous, dangerous road. It's got to be here, this roadhouse, just for a link for, for people, for fuel and so forth. It really has to be sustained and kept going. We don't have anything else except for the three of us that live at the roadhouse. There is no other people living anywhere close to us, and that's what we love about it. Even though we miss all of our kids and everything else, we have Bronson. Bronson gives us a lot of love and cuddles and kisses. Mummy's boy, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Bronson, what sort of animals do you like chasing? You like lizards and dogs and dingoes and snakes and crows? Yeah. Bronson likes to chase anything that moves, really. Oh, we get some crazies. We have people trying to walk it. We have people riding push bikes. We have the kids from the lands come for their school camps on their way to Perth and on the way back. From Perth, it's 1,200 kilometres to Chukiella Roadhouse. Could take them two, three days towing caravans through here and what have you. Um, and that's without breakdowns and so forth, which is a common occurrence through here. It's really interesting, the stories that you get, just because it's there. People ride push bikes just because they're silly. We get a lot of unprepared travellers coming through. They just don't understand the, the you know, actual harshness of the land through here. <laughs> it's a shock, all right. It's a shock. They you know, come through with no water, no spare tyres, haven't checked the jack, those sort of things, and they get caught out big time. There's been occasion where we've just had to, for their own safety, putting their lives at risk, we've had to turn them around and send them back the 300 k's that they've come. It's a real worry as we go into the hotter season because the lack of vehicles that do come through, if someone needs assistance, it could be a day, two days, three days before anyone comes through to help out. There's been instances where guys have come off their motorbikes and turned in a 360 degree as they've fallen, actually stood their motorbikes up, sat down and are totally lost don't know what direction to go in because everything looks the same. So they've literally had to sit on the bloody side of the road for a few hours until someone comes through and can point them in the right direction again. This is what we'll call our used car yard. This is um, all vehicles that locals have, have driven through here and so forth and landed here and unfortunately the vehicle wasn't going any further so rather than staying out on the Great Central Road this is sort of the area that we've selected here and across the road where these vehicles can can actually be put. You may have heard of the Shipbox Rally before. The Shipbox Rally is um, organised by a, um, a fundraising committee and, and it's it's for cancer research. It's an absolutely awesome setup. We had 500 people here, 250 vehicles, and why it's called the Shipbox Rally is because they've got $1,000 to set, spend on a vehicle. That's all they're allowed to spend, and then come in and, and take on the Great Central Road. Unfortunately, being the sort of vehicles they are, this is where they can end up. You can see, as in past years, a lot of these have been pretty brutal accidents, haven't they, you know? Well, I'm always up around about 4, 4.30 myself, so you know, I, I think it's the best time of day up here. It's absolutely pristine, beautiful, quiet. Just me and me dog, which is brilliant. So it gives you time to take the world in and enjoy the place. That's why we like to get up here early here. Oh, absolutely brilliant view from up there, mate. You want to have a look? It's, it's stunning. Yeah, I, I stay up there quite often and just take it all in and think how bloody lucky I am. 
the view to the horizon is just absolutely sensational and to see sunsets and sunrises from out there is just, yeah, you, you sit there in awe of the place, you really do. You can really take in your thoughts, it's just absolutely magnificent. It's, um, it's a silence like you'd never hear before. It is so calming, it's incredible. You never get sick of this, do you? Absolutely stunning. When you talk of the desert, <laughs> I don't think they realise just how stunning this is and how beautiful, how peaceful. We're definitely the lucky ones. Okay? Wonder where the nearest person is. I'd say around about 265 <laughs> kilometres that way or 214 kilometres that way. This extends for thousands and thousands of hectares and no fence lines, no neighbours for us up here. And that's part of the great thing about the Great Victorian Desert. I think people that have got it on their bucket list to, to do, I'd say come up and have a look. It's something that you won't be disappointed with. Right the way through the lands here, the Nanatara lands, everyone will welcome you with open arms. It's, um, it's a really friendly place. It's definitely going to be one of the highlights of your life. It's not a lifestyle for everyone. It really isn't. Until we got up here, we really didn't know whether it was a lifestyle for us as well. The longer we spend here, we just fall deeper and deeper in love with the place and the people. It's a move that, that we made in life where a lot of people probably thought we were bloody crazy and got a few, <laughs> <laughs> few things missing up top, but Whoa. Well, you do, let's face yeah, it, you know, like, really. You probably have to <laughs> if you want to live out here, but this has definitely taken our hearts and mm. it's probably brought us a lot closer together as well, spending time up here in the desert because you get so reliant on each other. We do and miss each other. If one of us isn't here for a day, we really, yeah. we don't cope well, do we? We really miss each other. Yeah. A lot of people can travel and, and try and find that place for them for a lot of years through their life and... Some people never find it. Yeah, some people never get there and, and we're quite lucky that we've definitely found our paradise. Mm -hmm. there, there's no doubt about it. It's created a lifestyle for us that we would have only dreamt of. Yeah. We're very you lucky. You just got to be passionate in whatever you do. It doesn't matter what it is. If you can believe in what you're doing, you're going to succeed and it's going to be a good thing for not just for yourself. Initially, it was like adventure, just getting away and, and being remote and being away from the, the hustle and bustle of the big city and so forth. But it's, it's so much more than that. Once you get up here and you live it, it becomes so much more. Your whole perspective and perception of the place, everything just changes the longer you stay here. It's, you get rooted in the red dirt, don't you? Oh, you get yeah. Feet are it, just in there. I'm no romantic, I'll tell you right now. No, it's no, like, no, no, totally not like in front of people anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, babe. <but, laughs> you live in the desert, you're meant to be rough and tough, aren't you? He's you like ain't no time boy. for bloody romance <laughs> no. up here. He's like a toasted marshmallow. <laughs> a bit crusty on the outside, a bit gooey in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Being up here, it's um, it's made my kids so proud of me. It's in a sense, it's, it's given my life back to me, and because I, I sort of lost who I was, and yeah, of in <laughs> in in the couple of years of being up here, it's um, I've really found myself again, and I, I owe I owe this place and the community and all the community members and. And everyone right through, I, I, oh, I feel, I feel really indebted to them. Oh, I really do. Yeah, I, I, I had to, um, I, I had to, to come up here, and it's one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. When you start finding yourself and the person that you were, that's the hardest part. You're trying to do everything in your powers to patch up the damage you've done. And unfortunately, there's some things that you can't. 
and we have to live with that. But I'm still here. I'm living in paradise now. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a lot of plans still in our in our heads of what we want to do. We still don't know what we're going to do when we grow <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, we haven't grown up yet, have we, really? No, we've got uh, adventures to do yet. Yeah, bloody yes. <laughs> All your mates are going to be envious, I'll tell you. They'll be saying to you, where the hell did you get that shirt? I might try this one on, Carol. Will that fit you? You're a big boy. Mate, I might go nightclubbing in this. I've never seen shirts anything like this. So good. It, it, it's like they stretch with you as well. I'll tell you what, come up here. I'll throw in a stubby holder for you. As soon as I put this on, you should have seen all the chicks running in here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> My memory's shocking, mate. <laughs> Shit, what's the number? Fuck, what is it? 90 oh, wait. 90- <laughs> 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90- 90